All right, so in Schoology, you guys have downloaded the 9.4 notes here. And I right, got that one. Okay, Schoology. Um, what we're going to be doing is kind of extending the idea that we talked about last week. Remember, we were talking about like how important it was to identify uh, the hypotenuse in a triangle and identify what sides uh, the length measures were. So we're going to do that, but from a trigonometry point of view. So I know that's a scary word, but it shouldn't be. Um, trigonometry is really just the part that we're going to do, the study of the relationships in a triangle between sides and angles. And there's three big words, and we're only going to focus on one of them when it comes to introducing trig. So I'll write them down here. You don't even need to write all three of them down, but just so you know, um, the three most common things are the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. And what those are, how we're going to look at those is in terms of side lengths. And in fact, we are only going to focus on the tangent today. Okay. So we are only looking at the tangent ratio. So we're looking at a right triangle. And I'm coming down to where it says here, key idea. These are some words that I do think you should highlight. And I'll try and keep it as concise as possible. But the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Okay, that ratio, the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. And we'll explain what that means. You know, we're talking about side lengths of triangles here. So your answer is oftentimes just going to be a fraction. So let me give you an example and maybe that will fall into place a little bit. What we want to find here is the tangent of S. So I remember that the tangent means the opposite divided by the adjacent. So here's how we do this, guys. First, looking at this triangle, I can see angle S is right here. Okay, so I first find the angle. Now, let's identify the sides, which is the hypotenuse, the 16, the 12, or the 20? The 20, right? The 20 is the hypotenuse. And you guys were really good at identifying that before. So now we know what the hypotenuse is. So what I like to do is I'll just put an H. That's not H. I'll put an H for hypotenuse. And then looking at angle S, because remember, that's kind of like the angle we're focusing on. If we draw an arrow inside there, okay, and I'll, I'll erase that in just a second, but that just kind of visually helps me. The arrow always points to the opposite side. So I'm going to put an O by the 16. Okay, so you put an arrow inside the angle, and that points to the opposite side. And once you have the hypotenuse and the opposite, the third side, it has to be the adjacent. So I'll put an A by the other side. Okay, and I always find them in that order, the hypotenuse, just because it's easiest to find, then opposite, and then the leftover is the A, the adjacent. All right, so now we're ready to write our answer. Remember that the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of S, the opposite of S was 16 and the adjacent was 12. Okay, it's the opposite side over the adjacent side. So again, the tangent of S is 16, because that's opposite, on top over 12 on the bottom, because that's the adjacent. So the tangent of S is 16 over 12. And then we should reduce that, okay? So uh, what goes into 16 and 12? Four. All right, four, right? So four goes into those. 
number goes into 16 four times and into 12 three times. So our answer is four over three. And that's it, we're done. All right, I'm gonna do, now I'll change colors here because the second question says we wanna find the tangent of R. So I'm gonna, I'm using the same picture here. I'm gonna get rid of that stuff and change my highlighting color to blue because now we're looking at a different angle. Again, it's asking for the tangent of R. So I'm gonna highlight R right there. And the reason I erase that is because now like my opposite side changes. Okay, the hypotenuse stays the same. The hypotenuse is still 20. But if I draw my arrow inside of, inside of angle R, If I draw my arrow inside that angle, 12 is now my opposite. And 16 is my adjacent. And so the tangent of R is 12, because that's opposite, over 16, because that's adjacent. And then that reduces to three over four. All right, any questions yet? Good, all right, we can do this. Well, let me look at example two, and I'm gonna do the first part. I'm gonna find the tangent of S. So, Looking at S, okay, this is my angle here. And so my opposite is 10. Which one's the hypotenuse, 26 or 24? 26, good, 26 is the hypotenuse, which means 24 is the adjacent. So for the tangent of S, the opposite is 10, and the adjacent is 24. Okay, it's opposite side over adjacent side. And then we'll reduce that. Uh, let's see, they're both even, right? So that's going to be 5 over 12. Okay, again, the tangent of S. So I put my marker on S. My opposite side was 10. My adjacent was 24. And so I did 10 over 24 and reduced that. So now I'm going to change colors. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. And I'm going to change colors to blue because now I want to find the tangent of R. In fact, I want you guys to find the tangent of R. So please take a minute to do that. So you're writing the tangent of R. So it looks like you guys did pretty well. Uh, don't forget to reduce your fraction. So looking at angle R, so I put an arrow in there. I got 26 is still the hypotenuse. 24 is the opposite. And 10 is the adjacent um, because you want to make sure it's in relation to the angle. Okay, so we're finding the tangent of R. So I draw a little arrow like inside the mouth of the angle, and the arrow always points at the opposite side. Okay, so my tangent of R is 24. So that was opposite over 10. That was the adjacent. The top is opposite. The bottom is the adjacent. So it's opposite over adjacent. 
So I divide those both by two, so that's 12 over five. All right, uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use these pictures here. I'm gonna draw another picture below there, okay? So you guys can, you can either draw this picture or if you want, I suppose you can just take a picture and you know, put it in your notes, but I'm just gonna draw a right triangle. And let's make that the right angle. Uh, we'll call it QRS. going to make this side six and this side eight and this side ten. And I would like to find the tangent of S. Okay, so you can draw that or you can take a picture and put it in your notes. So we're looking at angle S. So in reference to this angle, okay, first, which one is the hypotenuse? The six or the eight or the 10? Yeah. The 10, right? And that doesn't change. Now in reference to S, which one is opposite? The six or the eight? The six, very good arrow always points towards the opposite, which means the eight is the adjacent. Okay, so tangent is opposite, which is six, over adjacent, which is eight, And then we reduce that, we get three fourths. Okay, I got one last one. I'm gonna shrink this up just a tad so I can fit that other one underneath it. All right, I'm gonna draw another triangle below here. And let's take a look at this. Let's call it X, Y, Z. And again, if you want to just take a picture and put that in your notes, or if you want to draw it. And let's say this is uh, seven and this is 25. And I want to find the tangent of X. Okay, so we have this picture, this right triangle here. We have two sides, 7 and 25. We want to find the tangent of X. Why is this problem different than the previous one? Yeah, we're missing a number, right? So what side are, are we missing the hypotenuse? No, okay. But in relation to X, we're missing the opposite, right? So what we have to do for this problem is we gotta do a little Pythagorean theorem first. So this is harder when we're missing either the opposite or the adjacent. I have to do seven squared plus X squared, squared plus X squared equals 25 squared. Okay. 
okay? Seven squared plus X squared equals 25 squared. That's gonna help me find that missing side there. So seven squared is 49. And this is, you know, we've been doing this Pythagorean theorem for a while here, plus X squared. And 25 squared is 625. So I'm gonna subtract 49 from both sides. I get X squared equals 576. And then take the square root. And so the side comes out to be 24. So I had to do all that work before I write my tangent. So that problem was a little different than the previous one because I was missing one of the sides. But now I'm ready to find the tangent. Uh, remember 25 is a hypotenuse, that doesn't change. But that 24 is now the opposite, of course, and the seven is the adjacent. So to find the tangent of X, I do opposite, which is 24, over adjacent, which is seven. So those are the two types of problems you're gonna see. Okay, the first type is when you're given all three sides and we're just writing opposite over adjacent. Or the second one, you might be missing a side like either the opposite or the adjacent. You have to do a little Pythagorean theorem first and then write your ratio.